Hi, Gabe Youngquist, Last Cavalry TV. Welcome to part three of building a World War I trench in 1 16th scale. Uh, I've made a lot of progress so far, but today we're going to cover some groundwork techniques, some very simple casting techniques, and show you some of the accessories that I've got done. It's a beautiful day in Michigan. Let's get started. So just a brief overview of the progress that's been made. You can see I've started installing the first layer of sandbags. We do have the sniper shield put in. We have the logs installed and wrapped with solder just to replicate, you know, the, uh, the wider actually holding it in. And we have a crate installed into the dirt, which will be used to hold the hand grenades. On the right side of the trench, you can see, again, we have the logs installed, a layer of sandbags. I have a uh, weed effect coming down, and I created the corrugated iron by making a jig with uh, some bamboo, bamboo skewers, actually, and a heavy aluminum foil. So, some of the bits and bobs that I've been working on. I've got the G98 with the trench magazine. This is the 98Z, or the carbine. I've got some MG ammo boxes done. There's a couple grenades, a couple uh, bottles of schnapps. And I've decided to add another figure to the diorama. And this is another uh, John Smith, as most of these accessories are. I cut off the head that was supposed to go with this kit and used a different head, cut off the top, of his head where he was actually wearing the German soft cap, but he's in a trench. I wanted to put him in the helmet, and then I uh, converted and installed the helmet. We'll see more progress on him later. Here's an original 98 carbine. This particular one is registered to a machine gun company, very rare. I just thought you might get a kick out of seeing this since we are doing about a half dozen of these in miniature for the diorama. Any good World War I diorama is going to have a lot of sandbags in it, so I decided to make them out of plaster. A good buddy of mine, Doug, made the original, and so what I'm doing is I, I made a very simple mold out of silicon rubber. And again, it's just a one-piece mold. And again, the reason for the plaster is you can actually carve it, so everything is going to lay very naturally. I have the large section, and then I've also made individual sandbags, which can then be carved. And let me show you how simple this is. I'm using Hydrocal. It's a form of plaster of Paris, but it's very, very lightweight. I'm just going to stir this up, take a minute or so. Again, this type of uh, material, very inexpensive, it's, and if you're you know, pouring plaster into it, it's uh, infinitely usable. Uh, get that nice and stirred. And the hydrocal dries uh, relatively quickly, so you know, in one day, I was able to uh, to make all of those. And it, again, at very low, at very low cost. going to right here. Let's see, we're just going to pour that in and it'll harden off. Along there. And you can see I didn't even use the entire mold because I'm cutting these up as I go. So the base of the groundwork <clears throat> was the blue board, you know, the insulation board, which was uh, glued into place. But covering that is a layer of paper mache or celluloid. Now, when using this, always add the old good old Elmer's white glue. You know, and this product's available at most craft stores. It's messy. Just keep adding water till you get the right consistency. There we 
go. Keep some paper towels around because it's going to get all over your hands. And work it into a smooth but thick paste. And the white glue is really necessary to, uh, to keep this from, uh, from cracking. And when you apply it, you never want to apply it eh, more than about a you know, quarter inch or so at a time just to uh, you know, help the drying cycle. You can see that. And then, again, just in layers, I've been building it up in sections. little bit at a time every day and give us the uh, desired result. So when your celluloid has dried, I then will cover everything with Vallejo Dark Earth. Again, we've used this in previous videos. It is an acrylic paste with grit in it. Uh, MIG Productions also makes it and Reality and Scale. I just like the Vallejo uh, just due to the fact that it's priced and this color is absolutely perfect. So you just dab it on in a random manner. It dries dead flat. We'll just do a small section here. And whatever brush you're using, make sure it's an old one because it's absolutely going to destroy it. So, why it's drying, I've got a little bit of a shifted backyard dirt. You want to sprinkle that on there. And a little bit of backyard debris. Give it a little, a little dusting. Sorry, I'm right in the way of the camera, I know. Tap that down, and we've got a little bit of Hudson and Allen Ivy, which you can dab a little bit of this goop on. That'll lock it right into place, and it'll give just a, you know another uh, three-dimensional. So when you see the, uh, the next video, everything will be covered with this type of technique. Here's the completed one-tenth scale British World War I infantryman on the Somme that I introduced you to in the last video. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. It's been Dave Youngquist, your host of Last Cavalry TV, pulling sandbags out of molds. See you soon.